for this module, we're going to be talking about the skeletal system. The skeletal system will include, as you would imagine, the bones of the skeleton, in addition to cartilages, ligaments, and other connective tissues that will stabilize or actually interconnect all of these structures. Bones are the organs of the skeletal system, and they do way more than serve as racks that muscles hang from. They are going to be responsible, for example, for supporting our weight and working together with muscles to produce controlled, precise movements. Think about that for a little. Without a framework of bones to hold onto, contracting muscles would just get shorter and fatter. Our muscles must pull against the skeleton to make us sit, stand, walk, run, swim. The skeleton has many other vital functions some may be unfamiliar to you, so we will begin this, this module by summarizing the major functions of the skeletal system, which will be our learning outcome number one. A bone is an organ that's made up of several different tissues that are working together. This would be the bone, which is the osseous tissue, the cartilage, the dense connective tissue, the epithelium, the adipose tissue, and the nervous tissue. All these structures will then work together within a bone. The entire framework of bones and their cartilages constitute the skeletal system. The study of bone structure and the treatment of bone disorders is referred to as osteology, where osteo means bone and of course logy means the study of. So here we have our functions of the skeletal system. It will include body support, protection of internal organs, it will facilitate movement, it will function to store and release minerals and fats, and also it will be a site for blood cell production. So let's go over all of these in more details in the next few slides. The first one would be body support, where the skeleton will serve as this structural framework for the body by supporting the soft tissues and also providing attachment points for the tendons of most skeletal muscles. This image shows the pelvic girdle, which is made up of these two bones right over here, which are the coxal bone. And you can see all these ligaments over here that are holding these bones together to give the body this structural support. Actually, without the skeletal system, we would be sort of a limp of mass of organs, muscles, and skin. With regards to protection of internal organs, we did talk about this when we were talking about the body cavities, where the cranial bones are the ones that are going to protect the brain. The vertebrae are going to have a central canal in the middle that will house the spinal cord and therefore protect it. And the rib cage is going to protect the thoracic cavity, which has the heart and the lungs inside of it. So the skeleton will protect the most important internal organs from injury, which are the brain, the spinal cord, the heart, and the lungs. Because most muscles attach to bones, when they contract, they pull on the bone to produce a movement. Therefore, an important function of the skeletal system is to give support to the muscles so that when they contract, it will produce that movement for, for us to perform several movements that are important for our survival. Bone tissue makes up about 18% of the weight of the human body, and it will store several minerals, especially calcium and phosphorus, which will contribute to the strength of the bone. Bone tissue stores about 99% of the total body calcium. Isn't that amazing? On demand, bone will release the minerals into the blood to maintain these critical mineral balances and also to distribute the minerals to other parts of the body. Therefore, when you have low levels of calcium circulating in the body, they get released from the bones. And we will talk more about this calcium balance when we get to the last learning outcome, which has to do with calcium homeostasis. In addition to calcium, phosphorus, and other minerals, the bone will also be important for the storage of fat. This fat is stored in the middle of long bones, as you can see right over here. 
in the form of this substance that's called yellow marrow or yellow bone marrow. In addition, you can see over here on this image, the yellow bone marrow right over here surrounded by the red bone marrow. We will cover these marrows on the next slide when we talk about blood cell production. Within certain bones, there's going to be this connective tissue that's called the red bone marrow, located right over here inside of the bone in this cavity that's called the medullary cavity, as you can see right over here on this image. The red bone marrow is going to produce the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets in this process that's called hemopoiesis. Hemo means blood and poiesis means making. So it makes sense that they're going to be making blood. Now the red bone marrow will consist of these developing blood cells, also adipocytes, fibroblasts, and macrophages that are going to be scattered in a network of reticular fibers. It is present in the developing bones of the fetus and also in some adult bones, such as the hip bones, which are the pelvic bones, the ribs, the sternum, which is your breastbone, vertebrae, the skull, and also at the ends of the humerus and the femur. In the newborn, all bone marrow is red and it is involved in hemopoiesis. With the increasing of age, much of the bone marrow will change from red to yellow, and that's when you start storing triglycerides to be able to be used for energy whenever needed.